Bible which is Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Good to know that we are loved. Good to know we are held. Good to know that we are strengthened through Him. I read about a man who uh, maybe some of you will know, uh, probably don't care to look much up about him, uh, but his name was Graham, Graham Kerr. And Graham Kerr was raised in London. His parents owned several hotels and motels. And he became a chef and he began to travel the world. It was in the late uh, uh, 1960s and early 1970s that he rose to fame because he and his wife Tina, uh, or, I'm sorry, Trina, uh, 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 had developed something that, that's so popular today but was so unheard of back in this time. They developed a half an hour TV show that was all about cooking. And uh, he would tell you that, 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 that he would make food that was a heart attack waiting to happen. Uh, but if you knew anything about Graham, his life was led uh, by uh, uh, being funny, but he also lived his life in a drunken stupor. And most of the time, even when he was on television, he was drunk in his humor. And now in his life, he looks back and he says, I, I, I wish I wouldn't have. But, but his life in the early 1970s took a very large uh, a change when he had a head-on collision when uh, 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 he, was, he was drunk. And uh, 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 his life completely changed. His television program ended. And it was a domestic social worker that led his wife, Trina, to know the Lord. And one of his producers of his uh, uh, show, actually in a very backslidden state, and at that time gave his heart back to the Lord and Graham followed. Graham said today after he's lived in Seattle for many years, he said this, he said, I must confess that I am ashamed of those hundreds of episodes filled with questionable humor and drunken rants. I want to talk about something that I probably never preached on before in all my years of preaching. And it's this one. It is shame. 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 Shame is a spiritual sickness that runs rampant in our world today. Shame. And if there's one place that we can be healed from shame, it's right here in the house of God. There's healing from the disease of shame. The psalmist writes in Psalm 119, verse number 80, he says this. He said, Let my heart be sound in thy or your statutes, that I be not ashamed. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. You know, the, the, the opening chapter of the Bible tells how that God created the world. And then in the second chapter, it tells how that God created man. And you come to the end of that chapter, and the Bible says, at the conclusion of chapter number 2, it says, and they were naked and not ashamed. And immediately our mind thinks about this. They must have had the best physique. Uh, they, they, they must have not had any clothing on. And truly they didn't. But what we forget is that they were clothed with this eternal glory glory of God upon their body, but chapter 3 would change it all. They were naked and not ashamed in chapter number 2, and then in chapter number 3, it changes everything. There were some artists that were asked to illustrate their concept of what temptation was, and their painting was to, de to, to depict a, a, a man in temptation. And some of them blatantly gave things that, that tempted man to fall into sin and guilt. Others uh, uh, were, were, were allurements of lust of men. But one man painted a picture that was so beautiful that was uh, 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 of a road, and along the road there were beautiful, uh, 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 just a uh, 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 beautiful lustrous trees that were growing along the road. And you look down the road and there was a fork in the road. 
one bearing to the right, the other bearing to the left. And the artist was trying to co convey that when we get off on the wrong path, at first it's very subtle. We don't notice that it might be the wrong choice. It might be the wrong place. A one bears to the right, which is the right way. The other bears to the left, which is the wrong way. And soon down the left road, you'll find that, that there's uh, just mud and mire that will soil the individual that walks that road. Do you know that's how life is? That's how temptation is. It's very subtle. There's forks in the road. Amen. Here it was. Adam and Eve. Eve saw the fruit. And the Bible says that she saw that it was good and it was pleasing to the eye. So she took and she ate some. It didn't look bad at first. It wasn't like it was terrible, Brother David. It wasn't like it had a worm coming out of it. It wasn't like it was smoking, Sister Tiffany, with poison. It looked beautiful, Sister Tina. And she took and she ate and her husband followed suit then all of a sudden their eyes were open and they realized that they were naked and, and so ever since humans have been trying to do the same thing that Adam and Eve have done they've been trying to cover up trying to cover up themselves trying to hide from God an unpleasant fork in the road a choice that leads to disobedience a choice that then leads to shame. I'm talking to saints. I'm talking to sinners this morning. We all battle that same thing. Shame. Shame that comes from disobedience. Shame that comes from a wrong choice. And so shame can be well placed or shame can really be wrongfully placed. Really, we look at our life and it can be the rightful emotion associated with the wrong choice. Or it can be very misplaced. We can feel guilty about something that we should never feel guilty about. I'll talk more about that in a minute if you don't understand. Whether shame is well placed or whether it's misplaced, the result of shame is we hide from God. And, and, and any of us, when we hide from God, we end up sick at heart. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Probably most of you know what I'm talking about. Things that you look back and it just makes you sick to your heart that you made that choice. Because shame's associated with it. And uh, 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 what, what do we do? Shame can be so destructive. We've seen what it's been like. But we, uh, we, we can say uh, one of the, the, the things that, that, that is nationally being pushed and recognized now is cyberbullying. Do you know that the results of cyberbullying has been this? That Phoebe Pierce, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Phoebe Prince, she took her life at 15 years of age because she was bullied online by her friends about who she chose to have as her boyfriend. And the bullying took her to a place where she committed suicide. Do you know what the root of all that was about? About, it was about shame. Do you remember most locally in the papers you may have read about a girl named Michelle Carter and she had a friend that she was texting back and forth and he was going to commit suicide and she encouraged him to do so and she was charged with, with, with involuntary manslaughter because he felt shame over what people were saying and the way that he looked at himself. So shame is very destructive when we look at it. We look that, 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 that there's, there's folks who can be embarrassed, uh, more particularly these days on the web, Facebook, and social media. It can be a wonderful tool, but it can also bring up be a tool that brings great shame and brings on its own problems. And shame can lead people to very bad decisions. Shame is destructive. I know that most people probably don't go that far in taking their life because of shame, but there are a lot of people who live with shame in a quiet place of desperation. Amen, Pastor. There are a lot of people who live quietly with shame in a place of desperation. They lead quiet lives or heart grows sick. I want to talk about shame. Let's look at this. Bring your ears and your eyes in and your attention in for a minute. Let's talk about shame. Maybe you've never thought about it this way. There's all kinds of shame. There's innocent shame. Someone, when their character has been slandered, they've not done anything, but they innocently experience shame. Probably every one of us in here has experienced that. Innocently, we have experienced shame. 
And then there is guilty shame where we've done something that violates ethical uh, 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 boundaries and because of that, we experience shame that, that is guilty. And maybe we're deserving of that because of what we've done, but, but it's not something that should be attached to us for the rest of our life in a place that we should live in forever. I'll get to the point that maybe some are thinking about already. I, I'm going to cover everything. Just give me a little grace to get there. <laughs> And then there is social shame. You know where you make a, 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 an embarrassment, a, a, a socially, a, a, an error that, 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 that really is outside of cultural norms. Has any of you ever said something you didn't mean to say? Any of you ever been walking and you fell or you tripped? I remember one time I tripped the right, uh, uh, here and went flying through the air when we had some visitors here that, 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 that were friends. And I remember feeling so embarrassed, you know, because of that happening. How many of you, because of family, you feel shame, you know, feeling disgraced because of the behavior of a family member. So we experience that, uh, that, that shame. Or how about a handicapped shame, you know, where we, uh, where our bodies are physically impaired and uh, we can't relate to someone else because we have an impairment in our bodies. So we have some handicap. How about a discrimination shame, you know, maybe because of, uh, of, of our mentality, our, our, our social stature, our, our cultural stature, positionally, historically, ethnicity, uh, being in fear, we experience shame on a, a very much a, 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 a level uh, that, that's discriminatory or immodest. We fall beneath the standards and we feel shame because of that or inadequacy where we don't seem to reach so we feel shame because of that or maybe public shame because uh, 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 not being part of a group or feeling alienated, so publicly we feel shamed. Or how about this? How about anticipated shame? We know that we've done something, so in our mind it can go up all types of scenarios, and so we anticipate shame. So I believe that we're safe in saying that probably everyone here at some level in their life, or even now, has experienced shame. Has experienced shame. You'd like to forget about that moment. You'd like to forget about that choice. You'd like to forget about all those things done. You'd like to forget shame. That's, and so shame is at times the result of sin. Or shame is the result of a sinful nature. Adam and Eve, they, 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 uh, uh, before they sinned, they didn't feel shame. But after they sinned, linked with sin, came shame. Uh, if they had done nothing wrong, they, uh, they, 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 they wouldn't have felt shame, but, 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 but they did something wrong. And so the good news is God gave them grace and God clothed them to take shame away from them and God changed their future. Can I tell you that God loves to change the future, that we don't have to experience the shame of bygone days, of bad choices, sinful thoughts, things that develop. And so discouraged and defeated, uh, a shame-filled Christian uh, becomes this perpetual person coming to the altar. They never become confident in their walk with Christ. Can I tell you that God wants every one of us here to become very confident in our walk with Him. Yes, there may be those folks who never forget your choices. They may be wanting to bring it up, but we don't live our life in accordance to them. We live it according to the Word of God and by the grace of God, and we become confident in what God has done in us. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. And so the enemy, all he has to do is remind a person of their past mistakes and their heart becomes sick and they, uh, their, their spiritual blushing that takes place and there's a sense of uh, 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 un unworthiness that seeps in and, and maybe uh, the, you know, uh, the tempter begins to take control and then the tempter begins to laugh at us. And, and you remember the, the, the woman who came into the house where Jesus was and, 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 and there as, as she came in where Simon was and the Pharisees, she came in and she, she began to cry and she washed Jesus' feet with, with her tears and she dried them with her hair. And, and the Pharisees, they were disgusted by her behavior. Uh, the, 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 don't you know? I would never allow her to touch me. She was a sinner. 
But Jesus refused to allow her to stay in this condition. Listen to what Jesus said. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is he that forgiveth sins also? They realized that he was God. And the Bible goes on down to say in verse number 50, And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Not the love that she lavished upon him. Not the tears that was in her eyes. But her faith had saved her. Now go in peace. Can I tell you that when we come to Jesus with all of our nakedness and with all of our shame and by faith we trust Him and we believe, it's not the tears of relinquish that saves us. It's not our love in Him, but it is our faith in Him that He says, go in peace. Do you believe God's able to forgive that situation? Do you believe that God's able to put it underneath the blood, cast in the sea of forgetfulness? Amen. God is able to do that this. Everyone needs to know this. There is forgiveness with God. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. There is forgiveness with God. Amen. And I have to tell you this, that God cures shame. How many of you ever ate an apple before? It's not your question. If you raised a, ate an apple before, raise your hand. Some of you are really missing something good to eat. You should go buy one at the church. <laughs> How many of you have ever ate an apple, but when you eat that apple, now I've done this before, and you know, it seems like my fingers are like butter. I've dropped it on the ground, or I've dropped it on the floor, or on the counter, or whatever you want to call it, where you're surrounding. You dropped it. Do you ever notice that, 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 that when you eat that bite, it's not as crispy? It's been bruised. It has been changed. Can I tell you, you don't, uh, you, don't, you don't take that apple and set it up on the counter and think, I'll eat that in three or four days because you know what's going to happen to that bruise? It is going to all of a sudden rotten and get bad. There are times in our life where shame is like a soft spot. And if we just let it go without ever being taken care of, it's going to get rotten. It's going to bruise our entire life. Amen. But when we take care of it right away, we eat it. It really doesn't affect can I tell you that when you have shame in your life, you need to bring it to the master. Do you remember a man in the Bible? The Bible says that he had a withered hand. And, 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 and when he came to the synagogue on the Sabbath, uh, he wanted to fit in with everybody else. Now, he didn't want everyone to see his withered hand. There was a stigma that went with that. There was embarrassment. There was shame. So he put it in his coat. And when he put it in his coat, uh, what, what does the Bible say? Uh, that Jesus, uh, uh, he began to, to, to deal with that man. And, and, he, and, he, and he told him, he said, stretch forth your hand. And when he stretched forth, he extended it, and it was like never before. Kind of like us. Adam and Eve, we feel shame, we hide. We don't want anyone to see it. But until those things are exposed to Christ. We can never be made whole. Some folks in here, you've been carrying shame. Maybe it's because of bad choices and sin. Maybe it's because of your family and the choices that they made. Maybe it's because of the social environment that you've been in. You can't let go of things. It's time to stretch forth your hand. Some things aren't worth hiding in the presence of God. When he says stretch forth, we need to give it to God. Stretch forth your root hand. Maybe he was blushing. Maybe he felt hot. Maybe he felt the Pharisees looking over him. But I'll tell you what he saw when he saw Jesus' eyes. He saw eyes of compassion. Forget about what everyone else is thinking and saying. Forget about the way that you're feeling and look in the eyes of the Master because there's compassion there. Compassion is the first step in curing shame. 
to know that He cares about you. We think about... I, I, I want to say this. Let me stop here. This is what I want to address. I know that some people, they live without shame. They're so far from God. They're so far delving into sin and to themselves that they have no shame. I know that there are those people. But for those people, for everyone, there is a hundred that really experiences shame. And they're not living their life making an excuse. They're just dealing with the shame and things of their life, hoping to make it through. And so if shame isn't treated, it can wind up bruising the entire life that you have, damaging friendships and relationships. It can be emotionally, but most of all, spiritually crippling to us. And so we have to know that God cares about us. And you have to know that you're not alone. There's tons of examples of people in the Bible who dealt with shame. Do you remember the prodigal son when he came back home? He had spent the inheritance that his father had given him. And he came back home and he was ashamed. He said, I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. Just make me one of the hired servants. Just let me be a servant in your house. There was shame that he was dealing with, but the father looked and said, oh no, you're not a servant, but you are my son. Get rid of that shame, amen, and come to the position of being my son. Some of us are less than what we should be for God, amen, because we deal with shame of the past, stigmas that are related to our life, amen, and God says all the time, amen, let me reinstate you, amen, let me fix you. Remember Zacchaeus who was a tax collector? He was ashamed because of the life if you live. But one day Jesus passed by his house and everything changed because Jesus passed by. Amen. God loves the change. The eating of the fruit in the middle of the garden by Adam and Eve proved that there's permanent alienation of humans and their consciousness. Amen. When shame gets a hold of it, the unworthiness of because of disobedience, there's a breaking with the community of God. Amen. And there's shame that, 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 that writes their story. But God fixes shame. I can't believe I'm not getting more amens. Because we've all been there. But God fixes shames. Whether brought on by sin, whether brought on by life situation, the guilt is real. Unworthy sometimes we feel like we are to be called the child of God. But then Romans chapter number 8 tells us if God is for us, who can be against us? And I'm just going to paraphrase the whole rest of the chapter. There's nothing on earth nor in heaven that can separate us from the love of God. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. God loves us. But we have to seek God's help for people of shame. God has compassion. We're not alone. But we have to seek God's help. We have to seek Him for forgiveness. We have to seek Him to help us. Shame can be misplaced without a cause. And remember that your heart may tell you, you need to be ashamed, you need to be embarrassed. But God, listen to me, but God is greater than your and my heart. So there's no reason to live in shame. And allow God to take us to the future. God has something beautiful planned for us. Some of you may remember this song, but when I was growing up, there was a song, and the word said this. He never said you'd only see sunshine. He never said there'd be no rain. He only promised a heart full of sin and the, about the very things that once brought us pain. You know what? God knows how to take shame out of us and give us a song and give us victory. Sometimes we live in these houses where we think that we need to live just right. You know, everyone in the house of God has somewhere in their life, amen, experienced sin. And sin has brought shame. But God heals of shame. There was a story that I was reading about a man who stumbled into an Alcoholics Anonymous uh, meeting. And there in that meeting, I'm going back several years ago, the serenity prayer is all attached to this. 
oak meetings were one time all associated with God and the power of God and the presence of God. There at that meeting, that young man who was once a terrible alcoholic found the Lord. At one of those meetings, there was a nurse who came to that meeting. She worked in the emergency room. She realized that her life was so messed up because she just lived her life in a drunken stupor outside of being a nurse. She came into that meeting, and as she was in that meeting, she was asked to tell her story, and she said, I came to this meeting because I'm looking for help, I'm looking for hope, I'm ashamed of the life that I live. She said, I, 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 need, she said, I realized uh, a, a couple months ago, she said, there was a, a young man who was so drunk that in his house, he, he fell out of the second story window, and he tumbled to the ground, and they brought him to the emergency room. He was so drunk, he didn't realize how blessed he was to be alive. He didn't realize that he was hurt. All he was was believe. And in that moment, I realized that it reflected much of my life. I don't want to live that way. I don't want to be that drunk. And all of a sudden, from the back of the, the class, uh, there was a young man that stood up. He said, that young man was me. But I found God. And I found help. There, that young man, because he was no longer ashamed of who he was or where he was at, he gave hope to a nurse that needed to hear that there could be hope for, for, for her problem with, with, with alcoholism. I need to tell you this. We don't need to experience any shame because Christ already took the shame on him when he gave his life on Calvary. Amen. There he hung. Amen. Suspended between heaven and earth, naked and beaten and spit upon on all the sins of all humanity. He experienced all shame so that you and I can be free of it. Amen. Thank God that God sets free from shame. He endured it for our sakes. I just want to tell you this morning, keep looking to Jesus. Let Him lift you out of the shadows. Amen. He took the poison from the system so that you and I don't have to take the poison of shame. Amen. Just arrive, you can come to the piano, Bella, you can come up with that. I started out with Graham, her. His life changed. I told you about how ashamed he was. But now, his life has changed. He has a show called The Gathering Place. No longer about the shame of drunkenness and lewd and crude remarks. But he was able to experience the freedom of being free from shame and experiencing the presence of God with other believers. Don't let these girls distract you. I'm sorry. Sister Holly begins to play and sing. I want to tell you sometimes we need to look at our life and put it in fast forward and to realize that we can live our life free of shame. I'm not going to say this morning you should come to the altar because that almost brings shame upon you you by me saying it. I'm going to say it this way. You may come to the altar. Stretch forth your hand. You can bring your love and you can bring your tears. But most of all, bring your faith. Because your faith allows you to believe in your own peace. Each of us have things, and you can make your way as I'm talking. Each of us have choices that we made that can bring shame. Shame that can just stagnate us in our relationships with those that we love. Shame that can just kill our health spiritually speaking. But God says, come with your faith and leave and go in peace. All you need to do is ask for forgiveness. And His forgiveness is here for you. He paid it so that 
that we don't have to bear the burden of shame. I simply want to say this to you this morning. You are loved more than you can ever imagine. How can a prostitute become a saint because God rids her of shame? How can the individual who spent time behind bars for his crime, how can he become a model saint of God? Because God sets free of such shame. How can we in our stigma that we carry for years be free? Because God says you are free. Go in peace because you came in faith. All around these altars this morning, I want folks together with your love and with your tears. But would you say, God, today I'm taking my hand out of my sleep. I don't care what the Pharisee says. I don't care the spiritual blush that I may feel. I don't care the heat of the moment. God, all I care about is looking into your eyes of compassion and knowing that you can change this withered hand and make me whole. This morning, let's leave whole because we've met God and we were transparent with Him. Amen. As Sister Holly sings, I want to keep the same Spirit of God moving in the sanctuary. Let the tears roll down your face. Let your heart be lifted up in love. But let faith reach out to a master who looks with eyes of compassion this morning. Yeah. 